All right. I know I promised this last week. Um, I promised this to promise to do this last Friday, but then I decided later on, like, let's wait a whole week for the book to come out. So then I won't feel as bad doing spoilers. So this is issue number two of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin. Check out that beautiful fucking cover, man. That's good stuff. So we start in. Uh, this one's called First to Fall. So in this one, we find out who the first Ninja Turtle was to get defeated. And then we also come to realize that Michelangelo was the surviving Ninja Turtle. So we got Casey Jones and April O'Neil in their uh, uh, apartment discussing, like, oh, we got like all this food we bought, blah, blah, blah. We're announcing our engagement to the Turtles. Um, and they're like, yeah, it took you so long to propose and whatnot. But then you have Raphael storming in all bloodied up. I can knocks all the food off the table. And he's like, clear way. We had, we got ambushed. So you got Michelangelo and Donatello bringing in a very, very injured master splinter. And then back to, so this book, this, this issue flashes back and forth a lot. So now we got April back waking up. They're kind of hiding her missing arm right there. And then you look right over here, you see a leg. Um, so I got Splinter laid on the table. They're like, cut off his clothes so we can find what injuries the most. Come on, Don Dontel's like, I don't even know where to begin. She's like, get it together. Like, and then uh, they're like, where's Leo? They're like, well, he had to go back to make sure we got clear. Casey Jones, like, fuck that, dude. Like, hey, what's happening, Yamato? He's like, fuck that, dude. Let's go make sure Leo got clear, too. Roth's like, hell yeah, dude. Like, like, it's time for body count. It's time for body count, bro. Leo's like, stand down. I made it back. So then they're discussing what happened, how they got ambushed on their way here. Um... And then they're like, where's Raph? And they're like, Raph stormed off during all this commotion. Now we're back to the present. April attaches this arm. And then you see her looking. Oh, I can't reach my leg. Even though her leg was right next to the bed. But now when you see it in this frame, it's like 10 feet away. So she's calling out to Casey for help. So you're sitting there all like, Casey? Casey Jones still alive? When you look at that, you probably don't think he is. Which he's not. So now we're over here. <laughs> we're over here to Michelangelo talking with his imaginary dead brothers. Um, they're just like, man, we should like Michelangelo's just going off on like how he should be dead right now because that fall should have killed him from the last issue. And. Like, he's getting angry because they're all, like, I guess they're not all, but he's imagining them all, like, just uh, uh, throwing guilt and shame towards Michelangelo. So he gets pissed off and throws the tea kettle because he's, he's brewing uh, some hot water to make some tea. But did he really throw it? Because in this panel, it's back. on. We don't see him pick it up. And it's back on the stove. Going, woo! <laughs> So he's making the tea, and then he pours four glasses, and they all salute. Now we're back to the past. Raphael's storming the streets, storming the sewers, trying to get information on where Karai is. And, you know, he just killed this fucking foot soldier. And then you see Karai here standing with her gang of foot soldiers in some warehouse or whatever. You know how they always do that in comics. Um... And then Raphael's just coming in and just killing all of them. Oh, and apparently, apparently there was a truce between the Foot Clan, between Karai's Foot Clan and the Turtles. But the Turtles got ambushed. But now Karai's getting all pissed off, like they spilled our blood, so there's no turning back now. Like, shut the fuck up, Karai. You guys struck first. And so she's like, destroy the beast. Michelangelo's, I mean, Raphael's not having it, dude. He's beating the fuck out of 
everyone just whew, beating all their asses. It's just when then Karai jumps in. This is when shit gets crazy. She slices his arm. He stabs a sigh right through her fucking arm. So like when you <laughs> like this shit is wild. This is a wild fucking book. She says, my soldiers may have failed to take your head, mutant, but I will not, dude. She's fighting with that sigh in her arm. No problem. And look, like, you can see, like, arrows and shit sticking out of his shell, dude. Like, these guys are, like, firing, like, kill shots and stuff. But, like, since they got the impenetrable shell, well, I guess you can kind of penetrate it. They dive into the water. Dude. This fight gets crazy. So that they're just struggling at each other's throat. She pulls out this crazy knife, slashes with it, and then gets him right in the fucking jugular. And then he's got her stabbed in the back. So now it fades into Raphael sinking. And then you get this nice fucking one shot right here of just the sigh sinking. <laughs> Is Wolford here? <laughs> uh, so now April's up talking with Michelangelo, like, what the heck you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm just, I couldn't sleep, so I just brewed some tea. Is that okay? Yeah, manga is a different than uh, uh, than comics. Well, for one, you read them the other way. And then, yeah, like, she's like, you want so, like, she's like, this is the same tea from when you guys used to live here. Because she took refuge in the old sewer base that they had. And I told, I told you guys, like, last night what time I was doing this stream, too. But, <laughs> like, yeah, this one, it is going to be short. We're almost done. We're almost done. Um, he's like, yeah, this is the best cup of tea I've had in a long time. And then she's like, I'm, I'm fucking pop pills now to get myself going. But then she asked for some tea. And then she's like, man, uh, so he's curious about her arm and leg. They have this little conversation. They'd have a lot of catching up to do. She's going to whip up some breakfast. And then she, start, uh, she starts talking about, uh, like or Michelangelo's like, yeah, that fall would have killed me if I was younger. And she's like, April's all like, yeah, but your your mutations making you stronger. Um, no, Splinter's dead. Splinter died. That's why uh, Raphael went off on that rampage. Uh, Raphael went off on that rampage because the Foot Clan ambushed them. And they killed Splinter. Um. So she, and so April's here talking about how Michelangelo's uh, mutation has been progressing over the years. Like he can heal faster, and uh, he's bigger and stronger. And now um, April's calling Casey to breakfast. So now Michelangelo's like, "What? Casey Jones is still alive? No, it's the daughter." It's April O'Neil and Casey Jones' daughter who rescued Michelangelo in the last issue. Nice little one shot. So now they're talking about we kind of already met, and like she starts going on and on. Like, it's nice to meet you guys for real. Like, I've heard about you guys my whole life. Um, so he's just like, Casey? Like, this, um, she's been doing kendo training. So now we're back. Now we're to Hiroki, Karai's son. Hiroki just fucking training with his Foot Clan. He's whooping all their asses. He's like, "All right, training's done." Um, he's like, "I want a full update on where have you guys found the mutant? They they haven't found uh, Michelangelo yet." So he's like, "All right, yeah, I want to crack down the whole fucking city." What's up, Hentai Slayer? I said, I want to crack down on the whole fucking city. Dude, like, you know what's going to happen if you fail. Like, the last fucking general. You got crows that's, like, eating this skull. (laughs) 
So now they just finished breakfast. This is when you find out Casey's been doing Kendo. Casey O'Neill, I guess. Got a bowl of broken eggs. So now we're talking about how there's like a resistance. There's always a resistance in these type of fucking stories. There's always a resistance. In these types of stories. So they're talking about how they're resistance. They're teamed up with the battlefield and the underground. They're talking about how New York has been split into three sections. There's the there's rock bottom, there's uh the middle there's the top, middle, and bottom, and they're in rock bottom. So now Casey's taking Michelangelo to their little training room. And she's talking about like how off, like she, how this is when she's talking about how she's like heard about them their whole life. Don't they look weird without their mask? Like look at that. <laughs> but also they're a lot older than this, obviously, since their daughter is a fucking teenager and shit now. Um, she's talking about how she's been studying uh, all sorts of martial arts and stuff her whole life, and she's always. Uh, looked up to the turtles like they were basically like storybook heroes because she's all she's seen is all she heard is stories and seen pictures of them. She's not um right here. Re she reveals that she kept all of Michelangelo's uh, uh, weapons that he left behind. Um, he's like, thank you. These are all personal to me. And so then she starts asking about this uh, book right here. And like she's like, I can't read it. It's Japanese. I only know a little bit of Japanese, and it's like handwritten, so it's harder to read. And he's like, Yeah, that was Splinter's book. And so she's like, Where have you been all these years, anyway? Like, where'd you go? So then we get this whole like, after everyone died, he just went on a journey. Um, to just end his life. So he went off to the went off to the mountains, and he's talking about like with the cold air and him being cold blooded dude, like it was pretty much death for him, but his body, his mutant body didn't want to die. And then eventually it got warm out and he started meditating for like, he says, uh, he doesn't know how long he was meditating. And, and then like one day when he's just minding his own business, these people are all like, kill the freak. My arms are hurting holding this book up. So then he just started getting mad and he beat the shit out of everybody. It looks like he killed everybody. And then now he's traveling around, figuring out like what his mission is, what his destiny is. He, think his, he thinks his destiny is to get revenge. So he started traveling around, killing people that, and then just killing people that got in his way. And then he became, and then he went back home to New York. And this is where he is now. I'm pretty sure each book is going to have a flashback of how they all died. She's like, what does no peace mean? He's like, it's, I still have work to do. It's hard to imagine Michelangelo brooding because even she's all like, you're supposed to be the funny one. You know, <laughs> it's, it's hard to imagine him brooding. But now he's uh, he's like, I won't let you. She's like, we're going to help you take down Hiroki or Hiroti, what, like, fuck, whatever his name is. He's all like, no, I don't want you to get killed, too. She's like, well, we're doing it anyways. So, fucking Hiroto. She's like, we're doing it anyway. So, he's all like, fine. He's like, I can't uh, tell if you are more like your mom or your dad. So, then we see her. We see April opening up a safe. And she pulls out some sort of helmet. It kind of looks like a, a metalhead's head. And then when now we got next issue. Here's the cover for the next issue. So we'll probably learn more about what happened to Casey Jones. Yes, a man does change. A man does change. Then we get a cool back. And then on this last page here, we got all the cool like variant covers and other Turtles books that are out. So we get all these cool variant covers. And it also has other stuff from IDW that have that are coming out. This book is incredible. You can pick it up at your local comic book store for $8.99. Issue number two. 
It's been out for a week now, so it might actually be hard to find a copy because this is a highly sought after book. I pre-order them. So I always get a first print. Let's see if I got a fucking first print. Yes. I always get a first print. I pre-order them. So, man, uh, I can't tell which one I like better. The first one was really insane. And uh, you just wanted to have the mystery. Like, you wanted to know the mystery right away of who the surviving turtle was. And there was a lot more interaction with him and the brothers in that one this one this had the one scene with the t but now he's actually hanging out with people that he knows so he's probably not going to be relying on his memory of his brothers as much i don't know we'll see we'll see um in another two months or so this book took like two months for it to come out since the first one um it was supposed to come out last month but there was uh yeah yeah back in january it was supposed to come out but there was a bunch of delays. They probably wanted to change some things. Um, yeah, but this shit is incredible. Um, if you have the means to read it yourself and check it out, I highly suggest it. Um, oh, man, it's so good. It's so good. Um, it's a lot more violent than you remember the turtles being. Actually, though, like, I think I think turtles get pretty violent. I don't know. Especially that Turtle, uh, Ninja Turtles Batman movie. Shit was pretty wild, especially for being a Nickelodeon movie. But that concludes issue number two of The Last Ronin. Um, yeah, we'll find out what happens. We'll find out what happens uh, in a month, maybe. I don't know. Motherfuckers do manga weekly. And usually it's like four to six months will make sense because it's just like usually one person doing it. Look at this one has the whole squad, dude. It has Kevin Eastman, fucking Laird, Waltz. It's got a whole fucking squad working on it. So hopefully it comes out next month. I got it pre-ordered. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. And I'll do the same thing with that one. I'll wait a whole week after it comes out and then do the review. So uh, spoilers aren't as bad. Because, yeah, we we spoil everything on my streams. Everyone should know that now. I don't even know what's going on on the Facebook end. Because I'm live on Facebook as well. And I can't see the comments. So I'll find out what they were saying, too. Um, yeah, Holson, you... This is not sure. This is a double size. These are double sized issues. Look how thick. Look how thick this boy is, dude. Look how thick that is. These are double sized issues. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Holson. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'll see you guys tomorrow when we do the Super Talks crossover. So catch you later.